A senator has resigned from the upper chamber's biggest parliamentary group before a hearing took place to consider removing her from it. Mary Lou McFedrin left the independent senator's group because she said she did not think she would receive a fair hearing. She sent an email in September to all senators questioning how the chamber's ethics code was being applied. Senator Yuan Pao Wu, facilitator of the ISG, says Senator McFedrin was offered an opportunity to defend herself through a fair and impartial hearing. Well, joining us now to talk more about the situation is the senator herself, Ms. Mary Lou McFedrin. Welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you very much, Nima. It's good to be here. Now, let's start with this, ma'am. Uh, what were the events that led to your resignation from the independent senator's group? Well, we're actually talking about a pretty long sequence of a, a range of events. and We don't have time to go into the detail. But really what it boiled down to was a fundamental difference between how I view the value of questioning as an independent senator and how the leadership of the independent senators group has, has come to respond. I also um, tried in my letter of resignation to give a very clear um, two points of view, their point of view, my point of view, in terms of some of the key areas of difference. But in terms of your, the question about why I didn't go through with the hearing, I respect the fact that Senator Wu perceives what was um, going to be offered as being fair. I don't at all. I'm a lawyer. I'm a human rights lawyer. Um, I'm uh, 70 years old. I've had a fair bit of experience in the world. And in no way would I describe what ended up being the procedures of this hearing as being fair or due process. And to add to that, ma'am, uh, I want to jump to a column in the Hill Times. In it, you mentioned that you were perceived as difficult for your stance on the ethics standard, uh, especially when it came to the recently adopted harassment policy. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about these concerns and why you say you were perceived as difficult on your stance? The reason I use the word difficult is not because it's my word. It's because of what people told me about what some of the male senators in particular were saying about me. And this was an adjective that I was told on a number of occasions had been used to describe me. I have for several years now been raising in the chamber through letters to the um, ethics committee, through uh, letters and communications to the Senate ethics officer, my concerns about accountability and transparency and the Senate ethics code. And I, I think really we're at a, a stage where I have a view of what transparency and accountability needs to be that is actually very different from many of my colleagues. Um, I will speak now to the harassment policy because really what it boiled down to for me as a lawyer, as someone who's been involved in dealing with harassment, sexual abuse cases, and chaired three inquiries, so I spent 40 plus years working in this area, I really truly believe that secrecy is not the way to go. And what we ended up getting with the new harassment policy was a more secret process. So as a result of that, I spoke in the chamber, I wrote, I asked to speak to members of the committee, and really we just reached a stage where they had a very different perspective on what was needed than what I had. And they chose to go with their point of view, and I had to stay with mine because I truly believe secrecy is not the way to go. Now that's really interesting, ma'am. You're saying that this uh, new process has some uh, secrecy within it. Uh, tell us a little bit more about how this process is organized. Well, I think you'll be familiar with the term NDA, non-disclosure agreement or confidentiality agreement. And this is also an area where there are different points of view, different interpretations. Just as there's a different interpretation, what Senator Wu thinks is fair, I don't think is due process or fair at all. So we, we really do have some very different perspectives here. But in a nutshell, I do not believe that a publicly funded body should be requiring non-disclosure agreements of people who participate in the proceedings offered by that body, paid for by public money, and that there should not be those kinds of limitations placed on those who participate. Now, the policy doesn't say it must go that way, but it exports the authority to make the decision to require it to an external third party who's hired by our, our very powerful and secretive internal economy committee in the Senate, reports back to that committee, 
and the loop is completely closed. There's no review, there's no reporting back. So my biggest concern is that this will go on for some period of time that in all likelihood, the NDAs will become requirements and we will never know as senators. And for me, we're responsible for our own harassment policy and there should be a feedback loop. There should be an external review and feedback loop.